Hi, I'm Violet Van Hees and this is Grow Your Movement Freedom. Welcome. Today I'm on holidays in Bucerias, Mexico. Fabulous place. And we're going to do a video today about sand, the sunrise, Simba, and your feet. Are built to be dexterous. They're like our hands. Um, they have 52 bones in each foot. There's, I think, 33 joints in each foot. There's 107 ligaments in each foot. They're built to make shapes and be dexterous and to feel the ground and hold uh, you up over top of the ground by being able to shape over rocks and roots and sand and all those kinds of things. The thing though is that we tend to stuff them inside shoes and so there's this lump that's in a shoe and we don't really pay much attention to our feet until they hurt or until something goes wrong and then we wonder what's wrong? So today we're going to explore a little bit if you wanted to have feet a little bit more like a cat. Not Simba's feet, these are kind of like our feet, right? But real cats have very dexterous feet. They can jump onto things, they can climb trees, they can jump off of things, they land on their feet well, they do stuff well. And the thing is, to be able to do that, you really have to let the joints, let the whole foot move and feel the ground and make shapes to actually conform to the ground. And uh, so I'd like to invite you to explore that with your feet. To do this, you need to spend a couple of minutes every day in bare feet. So that your feet actually get a chance to feel the world, to notice stuff. And you can be curious about how your feet sense the ground, sense the world, and have some spring in them. So there's two tips for you today. First one is to explore the springiness in your foot. The sense that there's a little bit of spring or like a little trampoline inside your foot, which there is. Because around all the bones, all the arches made from all the bones, in the middle of those arches, in the center of your foot, basically in that part of your foot there, is the place where all the arches come together and that gives you kind of a little spring. It's like for piano players, they have the spring in their hand up here so that their fingers are light. In your foot, you have a spring like that too. Sitting in a chair, you can do it um, standing, you can do it any way you want. You can do it walking on the beach, which is the sunrise part. I love coming down to the beach just to see the sunrise and the sunset and to let myself just relax and explore. It gives me a great time to do that. So you can play a little bit with this. I'm going to switch the view on this. Basically, just let your foot feel for the springiness. You can find out, how do I get spring in my foot? And you might find that one foot has more spring than the other foot. It's literally just getting a sense of, do I have a little bit of, rather than clunk, or pleh. Flat feet ten, tend to go kind of pleh. And overarched feet tend to be kind of clunky. They land on the bones. And somewhere in the middle, there's a place where there's some spring. And you check out, what's it like to have spring in your foot? And then you check out the other foot, and you see, does this foot have the same kind of spring, different kind of spring? And you might find that the spring in one foot is quite different than the spring in the other foot. So you can choose the foot that's got the best spring and really feel the spring in that foot and see if you can bring that spring into the other foot. Not by getting technical about it, but just kind of going, hmm, I wonder what it's like to have that kind of feeling over here. Or what is it about my good springy foot that's not happening in my other foot? Can I bring more of that into the other foot? All right, your second tip once you've got the idea or feeling of a little bit of spring is to find out what's it like to actually feel the ground. So allowing your foot to kind of feel the ground and to notice, do your feet spread out or do they do this? You can imagine a cat walking around like this wouldn't do so well, but a cat tends to really feel the ground and let their foot mold to the ground. So you can check out again, does my foot do this? Does my foot do that? Does my foot do eh? Or does my foot do this? And you can see whether you can ask or explore a little bit. What's it like to feel the ground? Actually let your feet be sensory. Let them be like your hands, feeling what's underneath, what's around, and making shapes to shape your foot to the ground 
because your foot's designed to have all those joints so that you can stay upright over top of a base of support that has the ability to change shape to keep you lined up over top of the foot so the foot can do its job and your body can stay upright over top of it. So that's it. Go check out what your feet are like, what it's like to imagine having feet like a cat. So that you can imagine feet that do this, that, that are able to spring and to feel and to be able to do what cat feet seem to be able to do. And see what that's like for yourself. See if that makes a difference for you. If it's something that you enjoy, if it's something that gives you a new sensation of your feet and what your base of support is like. What this, the foundation of your movement, your feet are at the bottom of this, what that is like when it's like this versus kind of like this. Okay? Have fun with this. Happy exploring. If you have any questions or you'd like more information, check out my website. It's right below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know how you're doing with these explorations and what's of interest to you. So get in touch. And in the meantime, happy exploring. Have fun. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.